Hi, my name is Professor Jay Zagorski, and today I'm going to teach you how to adjust an entire series of prices for the effects of inflation. When would you need to do this? In the last video we talked about my grandfather, who longed for the good old days, when a loaf of bread only cost one dime. In that video, we found the adjusted price for just one year, 1940. However, instead, if we want to adjust the entire series of bread prices for inflation, we can see all the years when bread was really cheap and all the years when it was really expensive. To see the effects of adjustment, let's first look at the graph of nominal or sticker prices for a small loaf of white bread over time. This graph shows a steady increase in price since 1913. Judging by this graph, bread appears to have grown more expensive every year, giving Grandpa cause to complain. A key lesson from this video, however, is that you should never make decisions based on nominal prices. You must adjust for the effects of inflation and base your decisions on real prices. The inflation-adjusted graph shows dramatic swings in the price of bread. There are some years, like the early 1970s, when bread was very expensive. But there are other years, like the late 1980s, when bread was extremely cheap. And if we look at the long-term trend, wow! Bread today is only slightly more expensive than it was back in 1913. It turns out that Grandpa was actually fooled by inflation. So how do you create a real graph of prices over time like the one we just saw? One way is to use the inflation calculators I showed you in the last video. But inputting every price back to 1913 takes a very long time. A faster way is to use the equation behind these calculators. As a quick refresher, the equation is the new price equals the old price times an inflation adjustment factor, where the adjustment factor is the new CPI, which stands for the Consumer Price Index divided by the old CPI. We're going to use this equation in a five-step process to create a series of adjustment factors. Multiplying these factors by past prices adjusts them for inflation. The five-step process is just like making cookies. If you follow the recipe exactly, the cookies will turn out perfectly. Mmm, delicious. The first step is to find CPI information. There are many places on the internet where you can find this. But my personal favorite is the St. Louis Federal Reserve's database called FRED. FRED stands for Federal Reserve Economic Data. FRED's my favorite because it's simple to use and has CPI data for almost every country in the world. To find FRED, simply type the words FRED St. Louis into your favorite search engine. Once on the site, type the words CPI USA BLS into FRED's search box. The first CPI series is labeled Consumer Price Index for all urban consumers, all items. That's a mouthful, but it's the one we want. Simply click on this item to see a graph and get to the download button. Step two is to download the data. We'll do it as an Excel file. The data in the Excel file are what we need to create the adjustment factors. So open the file once it's on your computer. Step three is to get the most current CPI value which we'll find by jumping to the bottom of the list. You need to remember this number for a few seconds, so if you're forgetful like me, write it down. Step 4 is to create a new column for our adjusted series, so we'll jump back to the top of the list for this step and move one column to the right. Let's call this series Inflation Adjustment. Finally, Step 5 is to type in the simple formula the new CPI value divided by the old CPI value. In this case, the new CPI value is the number we saw at the bottom of the list that I asked you to remember. Type in an equal sign, the number you remembered, and follow it with a division sign. Complete the formula by typing in the cell that references the CPI value at the very top of the list. All right, the number you just created is the adjustment factor for that month and year. In our example, we found that the adjustment factor for January of 1947 is a little over 11. This means you must multiply prices from that time period by 11 to transform them into 2016 terms. To find the adjustment factor for every time period in your list, copy and paste the formula into the rest of the column. 
Adjusting for inflation is a fairly simple process. But how often do you actually need to adjust? The answer is, it depends on your country. If you're living in a high inflation country, such as many places in South America, where the inflation rates are 10% or higher, you need to frequently adjust, roughly every year, or more often if you have the data. If instead you're living in a low inflation country, like Japan, where inflation rates are 0, 1, or at most 2%, you only need to adjust, say, every five years. However, if you don't know the inflation rate, a good rule of thumb is to always adjust when you're comparing prices from different years. Try this on your own. First, find the CPI for a country like India using FRED. Then take these CPI values and create a series of adjusting factors using the five steps I just taught you. In conclusion, just because the sticker price has changed doesn't mean that the real price is different. If you want to understand how a series of prices has changed over time, use the CPI information from FRED to adjust the entire data series for the effects of inflation. Be sure to check out my other videos for more economic ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.